accidentally exposing cloud resources publicly to the point that they can be accessed by literally anyone is unfortunately a common occurrence. It's something that's easy to misconfigure. You hear about S3 buckets being exposed in the news all the time, leaking sensitive data. What many people don't realize is that storage is not the only resource that you need to worry about being exposed publicly. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to find AWS resources that may have been misconfigured to be publicly accessible to anyone. In a post from Mitiga from November 16, 2022, they detail how they discovered that hundreds of Amazon RDS databases were leaking sensitive information such as PII. With RDS, you can create snapshots of your database, which effectively backs up the whole database. You see, the thing is, snapshots can be shared publicly. So in one month of time, Mitiga did a bit of research. They found that almost 3,000 RDS snapshots were exposed. And Around 1,900 of those were exposed for only one to two days. So that might indicate that these are RDS snapshots that maybe were accidentally exposed. Even temporary exposure is enough for an attacker to clone the snapshot and import the database. One of the examples Medica posted was of a MySQL database that was exposed for less than four hours. And that database contained a user table of approximately 2,200 users, along with emails, password hashes, birth dates, links to personal images, and more. So if you're a pen tester and you wanna find these, or if you're an AWS admin, what do we do? First, let's talk about what can be discovered externally as an unauthenticated attacker. One of my favorite tools for performing initial recon against any cloud environment is this tool called Cloud Enum, which I'll link in the description below. It's a multi-cloud OSINT tool it works on AWS, Azure, and GCP, and it does enumeration of things like open S3 buckets, things like storage accounts on Azure, things like um, other GCP buckets on GCP, in addition to a number of other predictable domains on each service. And what I mean by predictable domains is that when you go to spin up resources in cloud environments, oftentimes you give it a name that is unique and then it gets applied as a subdomain to that resource. So for example, it makes it really easy to look up subdomains for a, an organization that has things like S3 buckets if they just use like their company name as the name of the bucket. So let's take a look at how Cloudium might be able to help us find some publicly available resources. After you download the repo and install the requirements, uh, you'd see the end of the cloud enum directory and simply run python3 cloud enum.py give it k dash k for keyword you give it a click keyword of something like the company name in this case i'm going to use glitch cloud and we will let it run and you'll find it will immediately start to find things if there are buckets in my case uh, my open s3 bucket glitch cloud is uh, immediately discovered as well as a protected uh, glitch cloud backup so there's a couple problems with this approach though, if you wanna to try to identify all publicly available resources. Number one, anyone can create resources with specific subdomains if those names don't already exist. For example, I can go create the Glitch Cloud bucket if Glitch Cloud didn't already exist. So that in and of itself means that you don't always have a bucket that's owned by that company or you don't have a resource that's necessarily owned by that company purely because it exists. Secondly, not all names are easily brute forceable. So there's often times where organizations will create buckets that have extremely long, complicated names, and you're not gonna brute force those from the outside. So it, it takes authenticating to an account and running some commands to identify them. I put together this repository that I call Cloud Pentest Cheat Sheets. It's got a number of commands you can run uh, across various different cloud platforms, including AWS. And if we click into AWS here, uh, you can see where we've got a number of post-compromise commands that we can use to start to list out resources within an account. I will link the Cloud Pentest Cheat Sheets in the description below, uh, but let's try a few of these commands out and see what happens after we are authenticated to an account, what we can find. First up, S3. So let's list out S3 buckets with AWS S3 LS. We'll run that and it will authenticate to the account and give us a list of everything that our current account was able to list within that AWS account. Now you can see there's a number of very long, complicated S3 buckets. These are things I wouldn't brute force on the outside. This would be an opportunity to go look at and see if any of these are publicly available. How about public IP addresses associated with things like EC2 instances? It's very possible for configurations to be made to expose things like web services, SSH, you name it. So in order for us to find those, we have to look across multiple regions though. So to start out, uh, let's create a text file called regions.txt and we will throw in the regions, again, listed in the Cloud Pentest cheat sheets uh, so that when we go through our while loop here, it will go through each region and attempt to list out each EC2 instance from each region and then 
it will attempt to identify the public IP addresses associated with each of those instances. Now, in my experience, I've seen where, you know, systems get forgotten or maybe, uh, or maybe like a shadow IT kind of scenario where new systems have been spun up and resources are being exposed publicly, like web services that have sensitive things and maybe aren't quite as secure. So this is definitely something to look at. And in most of the cases, I would go and maybe even run, you know, vulnerability scans or port scans against these public IPs as well. So when that's done, we can cat EC2 public IPs and we can see we've got a few public IPs here to go take a look at now. Load balancers, another common resource that we tend to see that is not something you would easily brute force on the outside. Let's go ahead, authenticate to the account again. We're gonna leverage that same regions.txt file to look across multiple regions with this while loop to describe load balancers. And when that's done, we can cat the ELB public DNS text file to see the DNS records associated with load balancers within this particular account. These might be web services, you know, other sites to go look at as well. How about RDS? So I've got another while loop here for relational databases that we'll paste in, and this will attempt to go find all the uh, DNS addresses associated with RDS databases. Again, once that completes, we can cat the RDS public-dns.txt file, and this will allow us to find the domain names associated with RDS databases, and then we could go scan them to determine if they have any ports exposed publicly. Maybe MySQL is exposed publicly, and we can go start to do brute force attacks against the service itself. Back to that article uh, from Mitiga. Specifically, they were talking about RDS snapshots. So how do we look to determine if we have any public snapshots? Well, I've got another one-liner here for us to run. So AWS RDS describe dash DB dash snapshots. This will authenticate to your account and attempt to authenticate or attempt to read snapshots uh, that are available. Now I can see I have secret snapshot one in there. After finding any snapshots, you can then take that identifier and run the next command in the cheat sheet to determine if that particular snapshot is publicly available or not. Let's modify the DB identifier to be secret snapshot one and run it again. And we get this back. So in this output, we see an attribute name, we see attribute values. Now this result indicates that this snapshot is not public. So the way we know that is based off of this attribute values field. If this attribute values field said all, then that would mean that this snapshot is public. So let's take a look and see just how easy it is to actually configure this to be public. So if I navigate to my AWS console, I can click the snapshot and then click actions, click share snapshot. And then there's literally a checkbox for public. We click, I agree. And then we just have to save it. And now it becomes public. So now if we go back to the console again, run the exact same command, let's see what it looks like now. Ah, there we go. So now we can see that we have a public snapshot. So if you ever see this, if you're running uh, the commands that I have provided in the cheat sheets and you see attribute values all on a snapshot, that means that it is publicly exposed and literally anyone could go clone that database snapshot, import it into their own account, start to pillage the data inside of it. Elastic block store volumes are another resource that has been known to get exposed publicly. I highly recommend checking out this research done by Bishop Fox, where they found that hundreds of thousands of virtual hard disks are just available because they've been configured to be public in an AWS account somewhere. So they wrote a tool called Duffelbag uh, to help identify these resources that are out there. I hope this video helps show how organizations can accidentally expose various cloud resources, such as storage, compute instances, databases, and more publicly. And this video only shows a subset of examples of how you would go about identifying public availability of certain resources. So check out the Cloud Pentest cheat sheets for some more examples. And if there's something that you think should be in the cheat sheets that's not there, please submit a pull request and I'll get it added in. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I will catch you in the next episode.